Listen. Welcome to Pokemon Voice Chat. Just kidding, this is Nintendo Voice Chat, but today is Pokemon Day. I'm your host, Casey DeFridis, and today I'm joined by Miranda Sanchez. Hello. Andrew Goldfarb. Team Sobble. And Alex Osborne. Team Sobble as well. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, yeah. Sobble voice. So cool. One second. Andrew. If you really don't like Pokemon, <laughs> it's okay. I understand. I only hate you a little bit, but you can skip till like halfway through this episode, I'll have timestamps, and then you can just skip all the Pokemon talk. But I don't know why you would do that, because I have the best Pokemon professors in the whole office right here, right now, to talk about this. And based on what you guys just said, I know you guys want to talk about starter Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every who's your favorite? Who are you picking, Miranda? Sobble. Sobble? We're all Sobble. Are you Sobble Really, too? guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is I'm weird for me, because I'm usually a grass guy. Usually, grass starter types are always my I've, I've switched in every generation. I've really? Been. I was a uh, Litten for the last gen. I loved Litten a lot. That was last gen. Mm. Very good. Actually, yeah. really, I actually going. liked all of the, the starters. Poplio made me very apprehensive at first, but I really liked Primarina. But yeah, that's the thing. Poplio, I think, is the worst the ugly basic duckling. form, yeah. but the best of all. Mm -hmm. I grew a fondness for him in the anime. Mm. As long as Poplio, he was very cute. But so we have Crookie, a mischievous chimp Pokemon that is full of boundless curiosity, which is the grass type. We have Scorbunny, a rabbit Pokemon that is always running about, bursting with energy, the fire type. And Sobble, the crowd favorite, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> my timid wazard, water lizard Pokemon that shoots out attacks as it hides itself in the water, which is obviously the water type Pokemon. I love lizards. Yeah. Honestly, I like wazard. I love anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Sobble is really cute. I like Sobble a whole lot. I really love how they made it meld into the water in the mm. intro video. Yeah. Um, I think it's acid armor because that's what Vaporeon does mm. in the anime when it turns invisible. Um, and what is did you guys notice about Sobble that you liked? Well, I mean, I, and I, I will say backing up, like, I do like all three. Like, this is mm -hmm. uh, the first generation of Wild where I think all three are really, really good. I completely agree. Like, when I first mm -hmm. saw it, I was like, wow. Score Bunny's my favorite. Like, yeah. so immediately I was like, wait, no, Sobble. And then I saw Creaky and I was like, he's okay. Yeah. Very cute. Yeah. Yes. But then going back to Sobble. So <laughs> like, I actually do really like all their designs a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I know some people have some issues with the shape of at least Creaky's and Sobble's design of feeling like kind of similar and small. And I, I think it's like their body shape. Someone said uh, all of their heads are the same, which I don't think is really true, but I guess I yeah. get it. They all have like little like fringes sticking up, I guess. Yeah. And so I see some of the issues with them, but I actually just oh. really feel like they're well rounded and they're interesting personalities too. Um, and that's something I didn't get quite from every other gen before. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I agree with that. We wouldn't like, know the personalities oh. if the anime came out. I God, know. he's We're so the video good. Again. Yeah. Sobble, I love Look you. those cheeks. Hey, uh, wonder, uh, We're just squeeing over the Pokemon. I think yeah. I agree. They're all super cute. When I first saw Scorbunny, I was like, oh, wow, like a rabbit Pokemon that I is actually pretty cute. But yeah. we have so many rabbit Pokemon already. Yeah. We got Baneary. We got Diggersby. We got Lopunny too. Yeah, Lopunny. <laughs> Wait Ugh. until you see my rendition of a Scorbunny evolution during today's IGN Ooh. Can't Draw feature. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, because these are like, it's funny, a lot of people around the office, I think, are uh, like pretty much everyone in the office is at least a fan of the original 151, and then kind of each generation is like diminishing returns. Um, but a lot of people here, I think, weren't familiar with some of like the Gen 4, Gen 5 Pokemon yeah. that you see in there. Um, so they were like, oh, is that one new? Is that one new? But it's like, it, it is obviously just the three starters that are from this new region. Mm -hmm. But I, I, this gives me a lot of hope for the designs um, because I think that they're at least, they seem to be kind of a, a little bit of a return to form. Like I'm, I'm glad that we're not seeing anything that's like too weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. I am, and we were just talking about this, I'm personally not like super disappointed, but like minorly disappointed that uh, they still went with uh, fire, water and grass. Like I, I would really love to see something weird and, and do some other types that haven't had like base level representation in, in like a Pokemon game. Um, but then you gave me a really good reason why they don't do that. <laughs> so I, I do agree. I, I really wanted something else for a long time, but then I realized the reason they're sticking with these three types is because no matter which starter you pick, you will have one, opponent that you're strong against and one Pokemon that you are weak against regardless yeah. of what starter and they're very obvious which one is weak to what I mean grass is obviously weak to fire and water has to be weak to grass and it's just a normal elemental kind of circle of life that has been in a trope in RPGs for a long right. time and I couldn't I'm haven't really put a whole lot of thought into it but what three types would accomplish the same thing you know I feel like with a type chart in front of me, I could figure this out. Yeah, I feel like there has to be a, a there, cycle. There's no, there's no scenario. Oh, so, man. wait, really? 
I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <they> <laughs> I was confident. making a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it'd actually be kind of cool to see in the future where they have diff- like the two parallel games with different starters to mm. try to achieve that triangle in other ways. Yeah. Um, cool. And like if there's like a light world and a dark world sort of thing, and like you could cool. kind of do the different you know parallels to those. Mm-hmm. That would um, be really cool. With able to still, of course, get those in the other games, but um, I think that would make for a unique experience if you're able to balance that well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or as Casey pointed out, dual typing. Like, it, yeah. it would be really interesting. Um, I think you were saying, like, a water flying type and then, like, mm-hmm. have that, like... Right. I, I think you could do all kinds of cool stuff. I, I'm, i you know, like, at the end of the day, this is still a Pokemon game, which means a, a lot of really good things, but it also means kind of accepting that, like, they're probably not going to change certain fundamentals. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I'm... That's fine. Like, yeah. that's good. Like, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't necessarily consider that a huge con or anything. It just, I think I... Um, I have this standard built up in my head of like, oh, like everything on Switch is like a brand new take and like completely mm-hmm. changes everything. And like, I don't think it necessarily has to be the case. Yeah. yeah, just I wanted it to look prettier and more vast. And I think this game accomplishes that to a point. Yeah, and it's kind of hard to see what this game is going to offer in its entirety when we just see the starters and mm-hmm. the region, right? And like, mm-hmm. there are yeah. definitely things that we can tell just by looking at the map and um, how they present the starters too of like what we're going to see, especially with when they show the catch animation. It's like, all right, yeah. we're just doing like the little checklist right here, yeah. and showing like you, yes, you're going to have this thing, yes, you're going to have this thing. But um, I, I have a feeling like there's probably going to be some sort of surprise or some sort of twist as they do every year. Definitely. But I think until we get a very long, long break in the core series, we're not going to see like a Breath of the Wild for Pokemon. Totally, right? yeah. Like, Grookey's not going to come out and be like, you can play as me, or you can play as, you know, the other characters, <laughs> and you are the start of Pokemon, which they kind of do with other games. Yeah. But yeah. that's not going to be like a mainline twist or something. Like, they're not going to do something so out of, out of the way, I guess, of what we've expected until they have a long time to develop. Or maybe they never will. Yeah. yeah, I think they just set themselves up for this cadence where they're only gonna have smaller iterations, but with mm-hmm. you know, balancing a bunch of new Pokemon, and that's that's hard enough, you know. Yeah, right. that makes sense. And, and I know we haven't. Sorry. Oh no, 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 I was just gonna say based on like what little we have seen, it does seem like they're returning a bit more to form than even like Alola. That's like, true. We're getting. We're doing gyms again, yes. and yeah, yeah, just even the structure, the layout of the world seems a bit more in line yeah. than what we saw last yeah. time. So. Yeah. And we'll get to more of that soon right but i also just wanted to mention i didn't pick a starter like you guys did because i don't like to pick my starters until i see their final evolution. that's true <laughs> that's, fair. that's fair yeah and i am traditionally a fire type starter pokemon trainer but i've gone away from that sometimes like i wasn't really a fan of chimchar so yeah. i went with like um with different pokemon so. I used to really like Chimchar, and Pokemon Go has made me really not like Chimchar because he like Aww. has this like weird gangly. Oh, I, I don't like him. Yeah, mm. he's he's no fine. more. <laughs> but what do you guys hope for the their evolutions? Hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> I want to get Sobble. I want Sobble to be happier as it evolves because it's Aww. evolving with your love. <laughs> it's Aww. like a clown when it's maxed out. <laughs> no, that would, hey, we already had that kind. Yeah, of, that's well, true. Actually, kind like Poppyo yeah. started as a clown level. It's like a. Yeah, I guess that's true. At like the base level, I, I think of I think of her as like a ballerina, but I guess yeah, I guess yeah. after Poplio? after Poplio I mean, evolved, it's like graceful. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like it's weird. If you look at Poplio's evolution, it's like the evolution of their performances from like yeah. clown to like goofy and maybe a little bit more childish into like opera star. Yeah. Oh, that's you smart. Know, it's kind of yeah. weird, like looking at how it all changes. Yeah. As far as their grandness. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I want Sable to get happier. Yeah, just I, a little more confident. He just builds his confidence yeah. with each stage. <laughs> he just has like a leather jacket and sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, by the end. Oh my gosh, would it be so cool <laughs> by the end? Uh, I just want Scorbunny to not have a fighting type evolution. I agree. Mm-hmm. Like I'm yeah. ready. I just I just want fire mixed with anything else. So yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's already happening though by like yeah. the little bandages on Scorbunny's yeah. face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, little foot. And how sports oriented his introduction was. I mean, he he ran super fast and like posed really confidently and that's very exciting mm. yeah mm. sportsmanship i would like to see a, a bunny fire fairy type so that'd be cool really, yeah. yeah it's actually really interesting looking at these because it feels like every one of the starters kind of evoke like what that element evokes as a personality mm-hmm. so like water is like that kind of emotional fluid artistic thing where fire is like the feisty mm-hmm. like invigorated character oh, yeah. yeah and then kinda like what they keep doing yeah and the grass realized. type pokemon healed and climbed and was friendly and one yeah. with nature yeah 
Mm. With the grass. Mm. You've solved it. Yeah. <laughs> Just I'm expect that for every other Pokemon generation coming forward. I mean, only took us eight, eight generations. But yeah. <laughs> and I just want to say it's awesome that we're actually yeah. talking about the starters, that they actually revealed them. I know. I'm yeah. so yeah. Going into this, it was like, we'll be lucky if we get more than a logo. And we did. So mm -hmm. pretty yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. I was dead wrong. Yesterday, I was like, guys, relax. Like They're going to show one piece of art. It's not going to be a deal. They're going to talk about nine mobile games. I was like, dead wrong. <laughs> yeah. I really thought they were going to reveal something else or like several things before they even got to yeah Jimmy. same mm -hmm. yeah i really expected like a available now kind of thing like I, I totally thought they would do um not even anything crazy not like a full remake of, of anything but like i think it would have uh not been that surprising to me to see like a ten dollar uh, available today like classic pokemon game on switch finally or something like that they i they did say there was more pokemon news coming soon mm -hmm. yeah so it was very cryptic i have no idea what that means it could be something who knows I mean, I guess it has will probably be something. It'll probably be something, something, yes. yeah. Yeah. Probably yeah. something Pokemon related. <laughs> they're just lying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the camera turns off and they're like, oh, crap, we have we to come up with stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah it, it's been a good week, though. Uh, you know, between uh, seeing, and I know we're going to talk about it later, but seeing the Detective Pikachu trailer and this in like a two day span was pretty mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. So we, we haven't even said the region's name. It's called the Galar no. region. Mm -hmm. And Miranda, I know you've been taking a deep dive into the map because we've got a really high res map. I, I yeah. highly recommend going to the wiki page and checking mm -hmm. that out. Miranda's been working on that. Yeah, so and it's a really good asset. Yeah, it's like a really cool how far you can zoom in. So like Doug Trio is confirmed for the Galar region. I know everyone was just waiting for Doug Trio. Yeah, that was <laughs> but, it for me. Yeah. <laughs> now I can finally pre-order. So in like the trailer and everything else I had seen, I hadn't really noticed a lot of the, like the finer details. But in like one, when I zoomed in, like there's like this Doug Trio mural, but it's obviously huge because it's like pointed out on this massive map for some reason. And like, there's all these like really intricate little details. Like I think I have, or at least I have a theory that like the train stations are potentially also Pokemon centers, mm. um, kind of where you see them placed on the map and also their coloring because they're red and white. Um, and it just seems like there's a lot to be said about this map that we haven't actually gotten a deep dive into, which I am doing right now with Wiki. So please check that out. Um, like I think, we were talking about the gyms and also just like the layout of the map itself. So like there's these two cities that are kind of across from each other, but they're like walled off with a giant ice expanse in the center. So a yeah. lot of people are saying it reminds them of, of Westeros. Yeah, yeah, yeah and especially yeah. like sword and shield being yeah. the, the thematic yeah. thing. Well, the other theory I saw that I think is really, really cool is that this region is very clearly influenced by uh, like the United Kingdom. Uh, and then... Obviously, we saw Kalos was very heavily inspired by, like, France and by Paris. So the idea that there's so much train imagery here, like, it would be really, really interesting if you were able to, kind of like with Johto and Kanto, if there was some kind of functionality where you could um, either go to Kalos or maybe there is some kind of war against Kalos or something. I don't, oh, man. I don't think war. they would go that deep. But yeah. uh, Sword and Shield it kind of evoked a lot of people talking about sort of, like, what does that mean and is there a yeah. war and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so, like, definitely evoking the idea of conflict and, like, even just going back to the map asset, like, when you see those two towns in the north there's the furthermost which looks like london and it has like very modern looking landscape and like technology but the one just south of it that's walled off on the other side is like this more like old timey like castle town that's like very dark and it has like dragon imagery and stuff and so it's like what is going on and why are these big old walls here is it just to keep the snow in or you know that's really cool it's, so it's really interesting to see like all these ideas that are already just coming from like the map so and there's yeah. one oh. building in that expanse of ice and it looks kind of like the train it looks like, it's a train, train pokemon yeah. center yeah it's it's, it's interesting i uh I, I also find interesting uh, that we obviously saw a bunch of Pokemon from previous generations in this, but um, I saw people on Twitter being like, oh, that's cool that we already know um, Meltan and Metal Metal are from the Galar region, but they're not. They're super not. Like, they're, like, the kind of... I mean, if anything, I think maybe we'll see them in the Kanto Pokedex, but I do, I do kind of like the idea that that wasn't just like a Gen 8 teaser. Like, they yeah. do kind of exist completely separately from this region, which I think is cool. I didn't even think about that. Like, Meltan is kind of... Yeah, like been out of my my thought space. The thing I think uh, some people have said is that they uh, their region for uh, Meltan and Metal Metal is sort of just the real world because yeah. you can't actually catch them within Kanto or yeah. um, any of the actual That's existing regions. Know. That yeah. makes me uncomfortable. I know it's weird. I'm just like, like, no. Yeah, and in Pokemon Go, they just region. say unknown. Yeah, <laughs> very weird. Oh, so how do you feel about gyms being back? I feel good. I like it. Um, I'm curious how they're going to handle like Elite Four stuff and just like later game because um, they had a unique twist on that with removing gyms and Alola. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, are you guys excited about having gyms back? Yeah, I totally am. I, I You know, it's funny because like Pokemon having that 
same rough structure. Like I know it's a nostalgia thing, but like it, it just like it's like comfort food to me. It's like it's mm-hmm. why I play these games every time there's a new one because like I, I like going through that entire thing. It, it's why when something like Let's Go comes out or any of the remakes, like I, I feel so good going through that entire thing again. And I don't know. I like seeing the gym leaders. I like. Um, I hope these are a little more challenging than the Let's Go ones were. Like I, I like the idea of uh, kind think, of figuring it out yourself. I think they will be. Yeah, yeah I, agree. I have a very good gut feeling that this is going to be a lot more of a challenge than Let's Go. Yeah. Like on par for more of what we expect from the core Pokemon games. Yes. Yeah, and I think I'm especially excited because uh, in Sun and Moon, one of my favorite parts of it was actually post-game. Uh, mm-hmm. I thought the Ultra Beast thing was a really interesting kind of twist on what they normally do with the formula. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know if I literally need them to have Ultra Beasts again, but I, I really like the idea of them reinventing like what you're doing after you beat the gym mm-hmm. system, like once you yeah. do get through everything. Because that stuff's like, that's where the obviously the hardcore players live. Mm-hmm. I am really glad that they have gyms back, but to be honest, I would love to see side quests take the form of Trials like mm. side quests with that kind of structure mm. yeah. that are optional that give you maybe like a special Pokemon or you have to do those to get TMs or like et cetera, et cetera. I just, I think they're a cool activity that breaks up the occasional monotony of just going from trainer to trainer and battle to battle. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that'd be cool. And maybe make them more creative. I don't know. Yeah. But I think they can do a lot with the kind of upgraded graphical style and how pretty it looks. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I want to see what the inside of gyms look like because I think that's always my favorite think, thing. Is like mm-hmm. we've kind of Did we, yeah, was yeah. that yeah, yeah. Bit we saw one right the yeah soccer stadium yeah this yeah is like, yeah soccer or football stadiums mm-hmm. as you yeah. prefer to call them um and which is kind of cool to see that fanfare around it yeah like, sometimes when you go to gyms especially in let's go you'd see like some people in the stands like hanging out and just watching you guys fight um and of course crushing but then this <laughs> time like I think it's really cool to see that there's like an audience yeah and so I really wonder if that. Um, shot at the end where we see the trainer going like the soccer uniform almost excuse me football uh, <laughs> you know and like with the one hand that's gloved it's like is that for throwing your pokeballs I guess you know it's like there are uh, some sort of like formality to this like, That'd be pretty I, I'm cool. very curious to see like what all that is so yeah we've talked about some some of the return turning mechanics mm-hmm. and one of them that I think is a little bit more I don't know I guess up in the air and the question that everyone had for Pokemon Gen 8 for Pokemon Sword and Shield is random encounters. <gasps> yeah. Dun, dun, dun. They're back. <laughs> <laughs> they did not keep that mechanic of Pokemon in the overworld from Pokemon Let's Go. I personally wish they would have kept it. I yeah. I really wanted to keep Pokemon in the overworld. I feel like it made it more alive and made it a lot easier from get to point A to point B if my goal wasn't to find Pokemon at that point. It made shiny farming a lot easier. Yeah, that especially. I mean, that's like that is the one feature that I most wanted them to carry over from Let's Go. Mm-hmm. Not really, I mean, Let's Go is its own kind of separate thing. I didn't really expect necessarily anything, but if anything was gonna come over, that's the one I wanted because that really changed a lot of how I, I was grinding in that game. And, and um, I, I don't know, I think that was like a really positive change. Uh, random encounters, obviously, are something I've dealt with in RPGs for basically my entire <laughs> life. So it, it's not like they're like that awful or anything, but uh, I do think that was a really interesting direction, especially for stuff like shiny hunting. Mm-hmm. I felt kind of like, having Pokemon in the overworld was your reward for doing the Pokemon um, Go style of catching in Let's Go. Mm -hmm. And I think because of how it was all set up in the structure and the economy, it wouldn't make sense just to keep drawing random encounters at you for how costly it is to catch Pokemon in that game. So I didn't ever really think it would make sense to see them in the overworld as much as I would have liked to have that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm actually just most disappointed that they took away a Pokemon following us. Which oh, could come yeah. back. We don't know. But since they didn't show it, I'm I feel a little... like they would have. Another yeah. thing they didn't so they didn't show that were ride Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why do you guys keep taking these cool things? Keep taking this away from me. You show it to me and then you take it away. Yeah. It's my pal next to me. I mean, I would hope that like stuff like um like Alex wrote a really cool thing uh when Let's Go came out about like the difference between yellow and let's go. Um mm-hmm. And compared to like kind of the OG, like the core stuff, like there are things I certainly hope are gone um, that were kind of already like gone H-M's. from previous games. But HMs yeah. is the big one. Yeah. Like a lot of that stuff, I don't think they would bring back. Like I don't think they're going to return to roots to that extent. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. HMs being back would be the biggest bummer yeah. of anything. I'm, I'm hoping that maybe they just didn't show ride Pokemon because all of the ride Pokemon in this game are new Pokemon. So yeah. Just saving that for a reveal. Yeah. But Miranda, I, I agree. I feel like if following Pokemon were in this game, they would have showed it because it's such a small thing. Yeah, Yeah. my hesitation with that too is that obviously these worlds were like stripped of anything else in it aside from just 
the like background textures yeah. and like details and like there was like one encounter and like obviously they were very careful with what they wanted to show here and they this is obviously not final footage and like, not trying to show everything so maybe it could still be there but i'm not getting my hopes up so i'm so, curious too about <laughs> um there's that you know that shot of like the landscape when it shows like um like the not carving because it's in like grass but like you see a like, huge white like image of what could be a huge pokemon or mm -hmm. could be something um i really am wondering what the legendaries are going to look like here fitting filling in fitting in with the sword and shield kind of idea like i wonder if yeah. we are going to see like a like almost like a classic style like knight and like one with a big shield and one with a sword or something I, i'm well, so knights, curious to see like or I guess yeah like hound knights who knows with the, cool with the detailing on yeah, so I, did, mm -hmm. I did want to prompt a, a question just about going back to the random encounters. Um, mm -hmm. Someone from, from our NBC forums, um, Nick Raphael, I'm sorry if I pronounced your <laughs> name wrong, but he says, I, I'd like to know the panel's thoughts on random encounters in Pokemon and other RPGs, enjoyable trope or outdated tradition. So this is overall in Pokemon and RPGs, because I know like we got Octopath last year and that had random encounters. So overall what do you feel about random encounters do you want to keep them in pokemon and all rpgs do you think some it works with some games and others um for me i feel like i pad my game playlist with enough things that don't have random encounters to never feel like really too tired of them um i kind of understand why they exist and i kind of do like that surprise it's like what am i gonna get this time mm -hmm. um and learning matchups that way and I, I do like surprises so i don't mind them because i do play a lot of other things um, and again, I actually don't mind them in Pokemon. I think being able to choose when I'm catching, like very directly and walk up to it and say, you're mine, is really cool. But I also, I don't mind random encounters actually. Okay. Maybe I'm like alone in that, but you know. <laughs> no, I think I kind of echo kinda your sentiment there for yeah. sure. The surprise is nice, especially when you're trying to find something rare um, rather than just spotting it in the wild. So I think yeah. I, I could see that being irritating for people who play competitively. Like I don't mm. really do that. I like to play with my friends. I'm pretty casual in that regard. Uh, so I could see why random encounters could be increasingly frustrating for them. But I actually like the adventure of I want to catch them all and I really have to work for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a funny thing of like you're ultimately not like because I I really again, I don't really mind random encounters, but I uh I got so into the Let's Go style that I was like, oh, they have to have it. They have to. And now that like it's not there, I, I do like feel this like weird like tinge of disappointment. But truthfully, like it's essentially the same idea. Like you're basically whether whether you can see it in the overworld or whether it appears randomly, you're just gonna continue walking through that grass right. until the thing you're waiting for spawns. And yeah. and whether you see it after the animation or before the animation, it doesn't really matter. So it, right. I, don't, I don't think it fundamentally changes the gameplay experience. But um, I just thought stylistically it, it made the world feel more more full and more alive. Yeah. to see them out there mm -hmm. and you know you're right we get the surprise and then we also lose the ability to accidentally run into a pokemon you don't want and then yeah. have the other one disappear yeah. <laughs> so oh, at God. Least there's that so that will never happen in this game there's so many twitch clips of like someone has a shiny pokemon spawn yeah. and then they're walking up to oh, it yeah. and they bump into like a ratata by mistake and by the time they flee the shiny is gone oh it's just heartbreaking so. <laughs> there are downsides to having pokemon <laughs> in the overworld so it's true it's fine we'll get used to it some people like it yeah. So, man, I think we could talk about this Pokemon Direct for even longer. Like, there are some very small details. Like, for example, we saw some sneaking and before a trainer ran into a Pokemon. So, yeah. is that a yeah. callback to that. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire? Like, mm -hmm. the ability to sneak up on Pokemon to get Pokemon with uh, better stats? Yeah. And yeah, potentially mm -hmm. different moves and hidden abilities. Because that would be a really Ooh. cool returning mechanic. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Ooh, man. Yeah, yeah there's, there's so many so things. I, I have a feeling like in the following weeks, somebody is going to find something in this uh, in this trailer that is then going to become another conversation, another conversation. Like, I think people are going to be analyzing this for however many months it is until we finally see I more. I mean, that's what everyone's saying about the reveal with uh, Grookey. Yeah. And yeah. when he walked past that patch of grass that was like flattened and then it sprungs back up, it's like, mm. what, what exactly yeah. is that? Because yeah. it's very intentional. And yeah. so like everything that we saw was super intentional and... I just want to know every secret. I'm but, really excited yeah. to see more. <laughs> and for everything Game Freak removes for each generation, they always add that many new things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's their way of sort of keeping it still like that core experience, but keeping it fresh. So yeah, it'll absolutely. be interesting to to and see. I, 
And I do really like the theme of Sword and Shield. I'm going to call it Pokemon mm. SNS, like Monster Hunter Sword and Shield, <laughs> <laughs> because that's what makes sense to me. So you guys should all get on that bandwagon. But I do want to take some time to talk about Detective Pikachu and Pokemon Go, because it's Pokemon Day, and this week we've gotten a ton of stuff. So we got a brand new Detective Pikachu trailer on, what was it? Was that Monday? No, that was it yesterday. Was yesterday. That was yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. yeah, this week has been busy. It's <laughs> a thing. That was yesterday. Yeah. Oh, Man. My. Detective Pikachu on Tuesday oh, yes, this week. I love him. He's so cute. Miranda, what's your take? <laughs> oh, I'm really liking it. So I've, I've talked at length with people here about my reservations with um, Ryan Reynolds playing Detective Pikachu. And I think my worries about that are still very valid in that they kind of write Detective Pikachu as a Ryan Reynolds character, not as Detective Pikachu, the character that you see in the video game. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, it comes across really well. Like, I thought this this newest trailer was super charming and funny, and I really like their dynamics. Um, and just, I love these Pokemon so, so much. Yeah, me too. I love Lucola, <laughs> and I think there's like a lot of great nods that go directly to the video game. Um, obviously, they're trying to change things up, and I think they kind of have to because they could not adapt the entire game's mystery um, to its full extent into this movie because I'm sure it would cost too much. It'd be way too long. Obviously, <laughs> you do need to trim things. Um, but from what I've seen so far. It seems like they're pulling all the right things. Um, and like the tone is just so good. I yeah. love the aesthetic of this. Like I know people have issues with how the actual Pokemon look, and I think people always will. I mean, yeah. Visualizing a cartoon as a real life thing when they're like invented is just it's just way yeah. Hard There's to no right way to do it. I mean, yeah. I, pr I promise you you would get like a really weird effect if they were all like smooth and <laughs> CG. It would just it, it would have just as many people complaining about it. I mean, I don't know, like for me, even, you know, removing myself for a second from like my Pokemon fandom, mm -hmm. it just as just like a summer movie, it just feels really good. Like Miranda, I think you're totally right about the tone. And it just someone was saying on Twitter that it uh, sort of evokes these like 80s and 90s comedies um, yeah. that we don't really see that often anymore. And I, I like the idea of something like this, like being a little irreverent and being silly, but still being family friendly. Like this is something that like kids are going to be fine to see, but it also like just seems entertaining and funny. Mm -hmm. So they did reveal the big reveal, I feel like, in this trailer was Mewtwo. What did you guys think about Mewtwo? I don't, to me, it's it, like. It got I, a lot of comments on Twitter, and yeah. people have been saying mean things to Mewtwo. Yeah. But I just, it doesn't bother me that much having seen, like, we've seen, like, pretty, not necessarily photorealistic, but, like, we've seen models of Mewtwo from Pockin mm -hmm. and um, yeah. from a lot of the representations. There's not also even, a new Pokemon movie remake coming out. Oh, this yeah. Year mm -hmm. with CG, CG one. Yeah, and CG so it's just two. like I don't know, like this this version of Mewtwo. While like like the, I would say this version of Mewtwo, I was surprised to see people reacting to it so much because this is one of the least yeah. issues I have with some of the Pokemon. Yeah, in, I think of the, the Pokemon models, like this is one of the better ones. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I totally yeah. agree. Yeah, <laughs> like I don't know, this to me isn't that different than the yeah. way no. you would see him in Pokemon or or I mean, in, to some degree, even in Smash and like uh, mm -hmm. marketing materials and stuff. I think he looks cool. I yeah. dig him. And if you have a problem with it, you have to remember that man made him this way. Yeah. It's not his fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Complain to the scientists. But <laughs> I like Mewtwo. I'm loving these trailers. I honestly get kind of teary-eyed every time I see one because I think they're just so great. Yeah. So I watch this on the train on the way into work. I, and I was just too. like beaming. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's just got such a good energy. And I have a lot of faith that this is going to be a fun thing because yeah. the story they're adapting is very different from most Pokemon stories we've had. And I highly implore you to play the game if you haven't already. It's on DS, 2DS, 3DS, whatever you want to play on. Um, that actually, the newest DS generations. That actually was a question from someone on our NBC forums uh, called uh, named Taylor Hemphill. Mm -hmm. He said, do I need to play Detective Pikachu before going to see the movie? If you want to know what the story probably is, then <laughs> you can do that. Like, obviously, they are pulling very heavily from, like, the main through line of, like, this this beat for beat kind of is why these things are happening and this is the end result. Mm -hmm. um, like, you'll learn that from playing the game, but you definitely don't need to play in order to understand the movie. You it's kind of like reading a book, right? It's like yeah. like when you read a book and then watch the movie adapted from it, you're getting more of a robust story because obviously they have more than 90 minutes to tell you that mm. story. But um, then you're at risk of like if they change something, you obviously will, you know, potentially like it less. Yeah, I think it's I'm always on that weird sense of I think it's fine for things to change when they're being adapted because yeah. they have to. Like a game is made as a game because it's the best way to tell the story, whereas movies told us a movie and things are changed to fit, you know, tell as a movie. And it's going to have to change in different ways. But I think, at least for me, I've had a greater appreciation. Of course, some issues with Brian Reynolds being Detective Pikachu and changed that care a little bit. <laughs> um, 
I think I have a different appreciation for it because I have played the game. Mm-hmm. And I like, yeah. already love these characters a lot, and I'm excited to see their story told in a different way. Just seeing the integration in the real world, like sort of that realization, like with Growlithe walking with the police officers, and just yeah. like, it's just like, yeah, it's just weird. It's tail yeah. so fluffy. So and, and Storlax being a traffic hazard. Like, yeah. There are just, there are just <laughs> things that, like, I, I totally agree. Like, that's the stuff that is so charming about this. And, like, that's why I, I totally, again, I get it. I get why people are fixated on the designs of the, the kind of real life Pokemon, mm-hmm. but they've just never bothered me because I'm thinking more about that. I'm right. thinking more about like how clever I, it is, how they're implemented. You definitely get a lot more of that in the game too. Um, but I'll say the tone is also a lot different, even mm-hmm. though it does get into some like very intense things in the game, which is weird to say about Pokemon. It's like, yeah, it gets, <laughs> it's real intense guys. Um, but it doesn't have like that cool, like neon light, dirty city sort of aesthetic mm-hmm. to it. It's very much clean Pokemon town. Yeah, the game feels like, and I only played, I don't know, the first like four hours of that game. Like I, okay. I definitely like didn't make it far enough to have too much of a judgment on it. But what I played felt sort of like it was trying to skew younger than the movie seems to. Like yes. I feel like the the game feels like it's definitely aimed at like pretty young kids, whereas this seems to be aiming towards like more like middle school, like junior high and up mm-hmm. kind of age. I also think a, a city as clean as the ones in Pokemon are just unrealistic <laughs> yeah. for the real world. Like if they made a city as a set to completely mimic one to one to the city in uh, the original Detective Pikachu game, people would watch it and just like be taken out of yeah. the reality of it. Well, and that's why, like, oh, God, I'm so happy they did this instead of doing, like, yeah. a Pokemon yes. Yellow movie or something. Mm-hmm. Because, like, this works for that reason because they have the room to kind of, like, like, obviously a lot of people play Detective Pikachu, but nor near as many have, have played, like, the core Pokemon games. And I think they can do stuff like that. They can have, like, a little bit of license, make it more stylized, and it's not going to upset people as much. So... Detective Pikachu is, aw- is awesome, but you know what else is awesome is Pokemon Go, especially since we have Andrew here, a Pokemon Yay. Go expert. Woo! Yeah. So there are two new things in Pokemon Go this week. First, yeah. we got Smeargle, finally, the missing Yay. Gen 2 Pokemon. Jodo is finally done, yeah. yeah. And now we're going to also be able to change our teams mm-hmm. with the team medallion. Mm-hmm. Did you get Smeargle, Andrew? Oh, I did. Yeah, I sat at my desk like I a totally crazy person didn't. right when it came out. It's uh, it took so many pictures. Aww. So like Pokemon Go, the the two like big things to Pokemon Go are you know number one is obviously like the core Pokemon element, so which has always been like catching, you know, battling against people, more recently trading, all that stuff. Uh, but now like the the other thing they're kind of focusing on is something I think a lot of people f- sort of forget about with Pokemon Go, which is AR. And Niantic, more than anything, if you look at where their money is going, they are really investing in uh, augmented reality technology above pretty much all else. Like, that is clearly their interest as kind of an actual company. And so this week they launched a thing that I've wanted since the game came out, which is uh, it's called AR Snapshot. It lets you take photos with any Pokemon you've ever caught. Uh, What it used to be was that the only time you could take AR photos was when you were catching a Pokemon, Mm -hmm. either from the wild or from research or whatever. Whereas now, any Pokemon ever, you can pull it out, take a picture of it in the real world. Um, You don't have to worry about it running away. You don't have to worry about any kind of stuff like that. Um, But as kind of a cute way to incentivize it, they added in Smeargle. And for anyone who doesn't know Smeargle from the Gen 2 games, uh, he has a signature move called Sketch, which is, uh, I guess, like in some ways similar to what ditto does weirdly ditto takes the physical shape of a pokemon and their moves smeargle takes their moves but the twist is that he takes them permanently and so when smeargle uses sketch that is the moves he knows forever so yeah so smeargle could learn a move set that no other pokemon could learn and keep it permanently and it's, it's one of the reasons why people use smeargle a lot to be like a capture yeah starter pokemon like the pokemon mm-hmm. they use to catch other pokemon because mm-hmm. they can make a perfect set with him like, well and that's what's so interesting about pokemon go is that like they didn't really have a smooth way to do that uh like if you find smeargle in the wild it would kind of be outside of like since you don't do battles like yeah. what moves that would it take and so the snapshot thing was actually a really clever way of working around that because what it does is it takes the move set of the pokemon it photobombed so i think it's like a really cute way to introduce him to the game uh it is it, he's hard to get like it's it's kind of like just pure luck sometimes you get him after like four photos sometimes like i've seen um uh trainer tips uh one of the pokemon youtubers it took him like a thousand tries over two what, days what to did you say was the odds um, if somebody was estimating it was like one in a thousand. It's, um, okay. I don't, it, it's kind of just RNG. Yeah. But if uh, you do want a step-by-step, uh, instructions right. to catch Smeargle in Pokemon Go, simply Google how to catch Smeargle in Pokemon Go IGN and, uh, my page will come up that Yay. you can help yeah. us. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's really cool. And I'm, I'm so happy to have him. We're now completely done with Gen 1, completely done with Gen 2. 
And then Gen 3, uh, there are only two Pokemon left, which is just Jirachi and Kecleon, mm -hmm. uh, who people are theorizing Kecleon could even be a future photobomb Pokemon. Yeah. Um, and then obviously we're pretty far into Gen 4. I think we're like way past the halfway point. And the other thing that dropped this week, I think the AR photos is the best. I had a lot of fun summoning a shiny Charizard in the office and <laughs> annoying people with that. Yeah, I was like walking around cases like you do what you gotta do. <laughs> gotta take pictures of this Charizard right now. No, but we also got the team medallion, which mm -hmm. does cost $10 in the shop, um, but it lets you change your team once a year. So if you realize you made a terrible mistake by choosing Mystic and wanna go uh, Instinct, you can do that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mystic is the best. I, I mean, it's, so it is funny because like, I the team change thing is really cool. Uh, it's more, it's funny because I feel like obviously like, yeah, if you like, I don't know, like started dating somebody in the time since the game came out and you want to match their the team. Teams. Or like, I don't know if you like met a new group of friends and yeah. like you're like the odd man out. Like I, I think there are like plenty of practical yeah. reasons. Or you your might original team switch. betrayed you in a terrible act of <laughs> terribleness and you never want to speak to them again. True. Also possible. I, I mean, for me, I uh, there's a feature in the game called appraisal where when you catch something, you can have your team leader be like, oh, they're like really strong or whatever it is. Um, it would break my brain to switch teams because it would mean a different team leader, which means different language. Yeah, so like for Mystic, know. the best Pokemon is a wonder, but for Valor, it simply amazes me. And for uh, Instinct, it can battle with the best of them. It, I like, mean, it seems you already got wow. that now. I mean, yeah, but it's so. just like, it's so muscle memory for me. I, don't I know. didn't know the yeah. other one, so I'm just like, dang. Yeah, I watch a lot of YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, man, so we just talked about Pokemon for 36 minutes. I think Whoa. that's about all the time we have. I know more. we could. I know yeah, we, could. we could have a whole show about this. Oh. I know we could have a whole Pokemon show about this, but instead we have to switch over and we're going to switch out Miranda and Alex for Brian and Tom. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thank you Brian for having me. Yay. I love Pokemon talk. I wish we could have it more and maybe we can. Yep. So yeah, mm. thanks again. We'll be right back. Here we go. And we are back. Nintendo voice chat. Hey. Uh, Miranda has been replaced by Brian Altano. Poor her. <laughs> and Alex has been replaced by Tom Marks. Hello. 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 Well, we're going to get right back into it. Actually, first, I know we just talked about Pokemon a ton, but what are your two favorite new starter Pokemon? The sad one. I like the sad one. Yeah. Yeah. I love sadness. Sobble. Team Sobble. In a very on brand move. The happy one. I love the bunny. Score bunny is so great. Oh my Finally, God, a bunny. dissenting opinion. Score bunny is also, yeah. also very good to Everyone's all about the little sad frog thing. I love it's I, a happy bunny. Here's the thing. In in theory, I like the sad one more. Like contextually, I think that the monkeys can be more fun to have follow you around everywhere you go. But Grookey. Yeah. You know, you know, they call it a chimp Pokemon, but that is very obviously a lemur or a monkey. It has a tail. That is a wrong classification. I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's actually that's probably correct. And do I know it's not have tails. Chimps don't have tails. Man. Mm. Apes do not have tails. <laughs> this Pokemon is not an ape. It's wrong. Maybe it'll evolve into an ape. It'll lose its tail. I really wanted to become a gorilla. Like what? a big silverback yeah. ape. Oh, that would be incredible. incredible. Wait a minute. I never thought about like Pokemon's evolving but losing body parts. Would there just be like, <laughs> yeah. like go down that rabbit hole? Like grookey tails out in the wild, just everywhere, just I mean, like rotting. Slowpoke it's tails like are a delicacy. Yeah. Yeah. Team Rocket yeah, goes out into the caves and just yeah. cuts tails off a of slowpoke and leaves them there to die yeah. because they're tasty. I like where the show's going this week. <laughs> yeah. Man. So anyway, let's move on for Pokemon. Let's All talk right. about Resident Evil instead. Another wholeheartedly wonderful, delightful series. Wait. Speaking of limbs falling off. <laughs> yeah, the Pokemon of horror, of they call it. <laughs> so a Resident Evil collection is coming to Switch, and the way it's coming to Switch is kind of confusing and weird. Mm -hmm. Brian, can you <laughs> tell us a little bit? Yeah, so let me try to break this down. Uh, earlier in the year, we found out that a bunch of classic Resident Evil games were going to come to Switch. Um, one of the uh, PR people or community manager people from Capcom tweeted recently, we, we found out more by the end of the month. It's the end of the month, and we found out more. All three of these games are coming out on the exact same day, which to me, right off the bat, is a little weird considering, um, say, for example, uh, Square's rollout of the Final Fantasy games, which admittedly is completely out of order, but still gives you space enough to kind of enjoy them, especially considering that those games are like 80-hour RPGs. Uh, on, what is it, May 21st, I believe? Yep. yep. Uh, Resident Evil 0, Resident Evil 1, and Resident Evil 4 are all coming to Nintendo Switch. This is awesome news. Resident Evil, uh, these are two of the best games of all time, and also Resident Evil 0. <laughs> and, which, no, I do enjoy. I think there's a lot of cool stuff there. It's, it's a prequel that was made years after. Uh, Resident Evil 1 here that you'd be playing would be the remake version that originally appeared on GameCube and then it got remastered a few years later. 
Um, these are interesting games to go back to. Uh, Zero and One both have sort of static cameras and tanky controls, although those have been kind of improved a little bit over the years. Uh, and four was the first time the game series pretty much went into behind the shoulder third person it's action. It's the best Resident Evil. It's, it's awesome. It's also one of the first games I played that had those surprise um, fast, what, what are those, quick time events. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I replay this game a lot despite not really liking quick time events. Um, and I think they're mostly well done in this game. Uh, the interesting thing about this one is this uh God, originally appeared on the GameCube and then got ported to Wii with pointer controls and then went to pretty much every platform ever made, uh, as these games do. But it's never been portable before unless you consider the iOS version, which was this truncated, abridged version. Yeah. Which you shouldn't which, consider. Which you yeah. shouldn't, and it's also not even playable on modern phones anymore. Yeah. Um, so we don't know which version of Resident Evil 4 we're going to get. We might get one with pointer controls. That'd be really cool. Um, we this was uh, this did get an HD remake of sorts last gen. I would assume um, it's that. So I assume it's yeah. that. So the interesting thing about this is that Resident Evil 4 will be digital only. Um, Resident Evil Zero and One will be available uh, digitally and also on a physical package for sixty dollars. But when you buy them, you only get zero on cart and one as a download code. So if you're a physical collector, this is kind of a bum deal. You get a thing on your shelf, but it's not all there, which sort of defeats the purpose of having yeah. a thing on your show. And there, I think like it must be something to do with like the card format because um, I, I'm sure it just can't support that much memory. Because uh, yeah. when Final Fantasy X and X2 came to Vita, Square Enix did basically the exact same thing. When you bought the cart, I believe you were getting Final Fantasy X, but then X2 was a download. Yeah. So it's like it's not unprecedented, but it is. I, I totally agree that it's a little bit weird because it's like sort of what's the point of owning a physical then? Yeah. Now uh, oh, I've rebought four a bunch of times. It's historically been about twenty dollars uh, the last few years. Uh, when I bought it on PS4, that's how much it cost. Um, this was also available on Wii U through the Wii Shop, where you could download the Wii version. Very weird. That's a walk. Um, so we don't know what the prices will be on these just yet, but they go up for pre-order, I believe, today, if you're listening to the show. So we should know immediately. But we do know that two of them physically sort of cost 60 but I'm hoping they're 20 bucks each individually since they're not paying for the shipping costs uh, of that box that only has one game in it. So you can buy these individually, zero and one. Digitally. Only digitally. Yes. But if you're buying them physically, they have to come together, but they're not actually physically together anymore. Yeah. Yes. And there's oh. no way to get four <laughs> physically fake or 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 real at all or anything like that. Well, you could like print out a thing and make your own box. You could always do that. That's yep. fake enough. Yes. You could always do that. I am lost <laughs> entirely. I well, I, I hope that cleared things up for you guys. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, it's May 21st. Um, we'll find out more soon. Uh, I'm just gonna buy them digitally. And then that'll be at the end of that. It seems like the easiest solution. Just don't even pay attention to the stuff on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> but real quick, I just wanted to cover that Saints Row is coming to Switch. Mm -hmm. um, it's a Saints Row collection, right? Yeah, it's, the this is uh, Saints Row the Third. Uh, the collection is called The Full Package, which is not true because <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's actually missing a few DLCs. Also, I feel like I'm here to yeah. break down <laughs> so, really confusing news this okay, week. Well, and it's also, just again to repeat, this is Saints Row Three, Bird. yeah, not four. Like, yeah, it, it, Saints it's Row the Third with all DLC, but not Bloodsucker and not the Unlockables pack. Yeah, because apparently they mess with the balance of this game, which is a single player game that came out like 15 years ago. Yeah, who cares? Well, it, <laughs> but, that is out on May 10th. Yeah. So if you like Saints Row and wanted to play it on the It's not 15 years. <laughs> uh, what's cool about this is that we don't really have a lot of like open world games like this on Switch. There's no GTA on Switch. The closest we have is Lego City Undercover, which doesn't have nudity in it like this one does. And you yeah. can't drive like a piss truck. Like you yeah, yeah. Saints Row 3 is um, like a pretty vulgar game. Yeah, so it's I'm very, like, it's, yeah. I believe yeah. there's a garbage truck that shoots poop. Yeah. It'll so. be a lot of fun. Saints Row the Third in the Resident Evil collection feel to me like a monkey paw wish gone wrong. Of somebody was like, I wish for every game on Switch. And uh -huh. like, Granted, <laughs> yeah. here's this confusing mess of releases, <laughs> and you're like, Wah. I'm in the corner being like, Well, I get Resident Evil Four out of the deal, so I don't care about the rest of it. But yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, so that that's that. You can also buy that in May, <laughs> the month for games that are very old. So <laughs> another piece of news that we found kind of interesting is that Dracalia Lost is almost the most profitable of Nintendo's mobile games right now, mm -hmm. which is interesting because it's outselling Mario Run and Animal Crossing as far as market transactions go. Yeah. But it's a brand new IP. Yeah. 
And what that means is that it's a better drug, <laughs> or at least well, a more nefarious yeah. drug. It's got it's sort of uh, gotcha hooks in more than either of those games did. Now, Animal Crossing was a free to download game, which I played a ton of and maybe put eleven dollars in like throughout the entire course of that, and that was like to get some Mario items that I didn't need. And that game um, just had another big update. Like yeah. they're still supporting yeah, that really Yeah, actually this week Animal Crossing got a very large yep. update. Um, and that, that game's over a year old now. And then Mario Run, which was a free to download or free to start game, but $10 unlocked everything you could possibly do in it. Uh, and so there was no way to ever give money or, or for it to make money on top of that. And I remember investors at the time were sort of like, well, this sucks. And gamers were like, this rules. Yeah. Um, so it was in a weird spot because $10 $10 is pretty expensive for an iPhone game, but you got everything you needed there. Um, this game, on the other hand, is profiting better than both of those games, although it's behind Fire Emblem Heroes, which, uh, which also has, has had ridiculously robust yeah, support. Exactly. Um, and they just hit, what, a year or two years? They hit some anniversary, and they, uh, I, I was really, really into that game and then super fell off. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they just had a big content update, too. Yeah, so that's made $500 <laughs> million dollars so far. Uh, Dragalia Losses made 70.8. Uh, Mario Run was at uh, 70, or no, Dra Dragalia is at 75, Mario Run's at 68, and Animal Crossing's at 70, and Dragalia Lost is averaging 15 million a month. I think the cool thing here is that like this is not a known IP. Do you guys think it will be now? Like, will this funnel into a console game? Or I know that they've said that this is not coming to Switch mm. before, but Tom, right. what were you going to say? Well, I just don't feel like, and I, I enjoyed Dragalia Lost, I don't really like gotcha games very much like they really you know it's an addiction and i they, they don't hook me generally but it's a fun game the thing that's interesting is nintendo made this brand new ip for mobile only it exists and i feel like it hasn't really penetrated the nintendo consciousness very much like i feel like this is very much just a mobile game that happened to be made by Nintendo rather than like a Nintendo game that yeah. Nintendo yeah. is pitching this right. Nintendo talks about. Are these like very they don't much talk about their updates and directs. Yeah. They don't talk about no. this game anywhere. They really advertise Dragalia Lost on their Twitter all the time. Really? Oh, really? Or maybe that's just them appealing to me because they know I have a different <laughs> tendency. Those are targeted tweets games. directly. And yeah. These are, yeah. It's like, hey, these Casey. Are, <laughs> these are life. I, sorry, I'm, I wasn't familiar with this story at all, which shows you how hard I'm working in my last week. <laughs> Quite hard. But uh, <laughs> these, are fire lifetime, you. these are lifetime numbers for Mario Run Animal Crossing. Yes. Really? Yeah. They're that much lower than Fire Emblem? That blows mm -hmm. my mind. Well, well like I Fire said, Emblem like Emblem more than keep five spending times. Money. More well, like I, like I said, for both of, for Animal Crossing and 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 Mario, like yeah. you couldn't give those games money if you wanted to. Yeah. And for Animal Crossing, I kind of wanted to because I was like, I feel bad. I played this game. I played Animal Crossing every day for probably 30 minutes a day for like six months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want to I want to give you money. And, and Tom Nook was like, for the first time ever, no, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I spent uh, like some like nine hundred dollars in Mitomo, so no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Very kidding. I was like, no, <laughs> there's always one. There's always one guy. I can never tell when you're being sarcastic or not. <laughs> Mitomo was horrifying, by the way. Where all the characters were like, "Hello, how are you doing?" Oh. They had a really oh, weird no, I voice. Mitomo, I liked Mitomo. See, I know. Dragalia was. I almost didn't play Animal Crossing at all, but Dragalia I played quite a bit. It's one of those things like, oh, this is an exceptionally long loading screen in whatever game I'm playing right now, and then I'd open up. Dragalia Dragalia and then 10 minutes would pass be like oh the loading screen is done yeah <laughs> I do want to say that like <laughs> just like again looking at the numbers as we have them which is that uh Dragalia is at 75 million Mario runs at 68 and La Crossing at 70 uh and Fire Emblem's at 500 if I'm looking at these numbers and I'm Nintendo and I'm planning whatever Mario Kart Tour is that game would have more microtransactions than you would ever gotcha imagine cart. Yeah. yeah, you want the best cart. I mean, and it's like it's you funny want that bullet bill. Everyone complains about those, but like I guess the proof is in where people are spending money. I know. So I'm I'm actually really curious now what Mario Kart Tour is going to be well, kind of they monetization. Just, you know, you know what Fire Emblem and Dragalia Lost have that the other games don't? It's dragon waifus. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. <laughs> that's true. I think I'm Mario sorry. Kart could use Mario a Kart that. dragon waifu. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, they just gotta add Bowser, and there you go. I've always wanted to marry an item box. <laughs> Uh, so I've played like free to play or free to start uh, mobile kart racing games before because like I love kart racing and I have a phone. I'm always like, you know, I want to play a kart game. What happens in these games is really weird. The cars get tired. And so when you want to. All cars have tires. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I hate that. That was, that was amazing. Oh. That was really good. 
God, that was great. You just walk out of the room. You're done for the week. <laughs> um, no, uh, so the, the, the carts get tired <laughs> after a while, <laughs> and you have to either pay money to, like, give them energy or motivate them, or you have to just put the game down for a couple hours. So if you want to play Mario Kart, you're gonna have, you're probably going to have to throw money at the tired, tired carts. <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully not. Hopefully not. Well, real quick, uh, Johnny Cage was revealed for Mortal Kombat 11. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Where was it revealed? Here, On IGN.com. Yeah. Thank you, Destin and Mitchell, right? In yeah. Chicago? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right here. So uh, Johnny Cage wears cool sunglasses. He does. And he also throws his sunglasses at people to hurt them. He does. And is, uh, he looks weird now. <laughs> he doesn't look like an actor. He looks like a fisherman. He just looks a little older. He's got like graying <laughs> temples. I actually, this trailer, uh, a pretty violent trailer, um, this, it, the kind of like tongue in cheek, not taking itself seriously stuff in this trailer, and especially his fatality, are the first time I've sort of been into this version of Mortal Kombat, yeah. which. Uh, for me personally, it hasn't hooked me yet. I mean, not that I'm historically a Mortal Kombat guy whatsoever, but I, I just mean that, like, I don't know, for me, like, the ultra, ultra violence and, like, the zooming in on bones breaking and stuff isn't that appealing to me. Mm-hmm. But this tone kind of is. I don't know. Well, I really oh, yeah. like his uh, his new fatality in this game. It's where so funny. He goes to punch a guy's head off and just punches his jaw off, and then the director's like, uh, we got to retake that scene. And so you see, like, off off camera, like, the, the clapboard. Yeah. Oh, hey. and And then he goes, like, uh, he punches him again and like punches some of his head off and he's like one more take and then punches his head like to the moon. Uh, he also beats you up with an Oscar, Oof. which is great because it, it implies that in this universe, Johnny Cage is a good enough actor to get an Oscar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess anything goes. I really like Johnny Cage as a character because he always shows up in these games and he's like, wow, what a realistic movie set this is. <laughs> what special effects. Well, and yeah, and that's somebody else is like, you're in hell, you die. Yeah, and, it's, and it's like, and then he gets murdered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting so, yeah. against literal gods. Yep. Yep. It's an actor. Yeah, he, he just no, thinks I mean, it's good, like prosthetics. No. Yeah. I mean, he just trained that hard for movies that he ascended mm-hmm. his own human capabilities. And but again, this is coming to Nintendo Switch. Coming to Nintendo Switch, <laughs> or else we wouldn't be talking about it. Yeah. Punch in that head. You can punch that head anywhere you want. I love how they just get to like take 25. It's so funny. I really like, there's a thing about playing ultra violent games on a handheld, like. I, th- I told the story in NVC before, but like I went to a town in Skyrim and just murdered everyone while I was on a plane. And I turned around, and there was like this little girl sitting behind me, and she was just like, <laughs> <laughs> "This is what's fun for me now." <laughs> so, Tom, hi. You reviewed a game this week. I did. It well, came out last week. Last yes. week, but it came out yesterday. Yes. Trials I don't know what it was this week. I'm losing track of time. Yeah, I mean, I did that too earlier. <laughs> I don't even know what week this is. Is it March yet? No, it's not. It's still February. March in a couple of days. So <laughs> You're only two days but off. But hey, <laughs> Trials Rising came out on February 26th, yes. which is yesterday, which is a Tuesday, which will be two days ago if you're watching this on IGN.com on a Thursday. I believe you. What did you give it? Uh, I gave it a 7.9. Night. Oh, wait, that's different. That's, I mean, good. that's good. That's, that's that a very a, good. That is a good, yeah, very, very good, good score. Yeah. It's an almost great on the mm-hmm. IGN scale. Which you kind of did purposefully, right? It's like so close to great, but held back. Yeah, it, it is fundamentally if you're just talking about the trialsy parts of it like the riding the bike part it is a really really great trials game uh and it's just held back by a lot of the progression systems within the game and i'm hoping and a a couple of other little tweaks where they did things like every race even just if you're playing single player for your own just wanting to complete an optional contract or get a little bit better on a medal or whatever you're doing uh, all of those are framed as pvp races against ghosts of other players which are generally around your skill level but it means you could spend like i've done this where i spent 15 20 minutes really trying to beat a really hard contract that wasn't about time it was about like do a certain number of flips during the race or something like that and then i would finally, finally, finally beat this contract and be so proud of myself and then I'd get to the end of the race and I would be greeted with the race results screen which (laughs) ends with somebody's player ghost with the custom emote for when they win because they got a better time than you Mm -hmm. being them slapping their butt and like playing a neener, neener, neener kazoo song at you. and That sucks. And like that's not a big deal in terms of what the actual trials is but it changes the tone where Fusion was like, hey, These are the friends that you got better times then, and it was kind of encouraging you every time you finished a race, and in this, it's just, like, mocking you for being... Right. And it's like, that's not not a great... It's like a small thing, but it it added up over a while. It made me 
less inclined to go back and play levels again. Can you do like a like a tweet shaped synopsis of what this series is yeah. to the uninitiated? Because I don't think a lot of Nintendo fans really have interacted with this franchise. The trial series is great. It started as a series of flash games way back in the day on browser and it became Trials HD, I think was an Xbox game or Xbox yeah. Live Arcade mm-hmm. game. That's when it like really blew and up, that's right? That, blew that's up. when I first played. Yeah. And then Trials Evolution was really, really good and Trials Fusion came out about five years ago and was pretty disliked by the community, but was still for kind of different reasons. Trials, for those who don't know, is you're on a motorcycle and you're on a 2D plane and you have gas, brake, and lean left and right, and that's it. That's all you got. Uh, And the kind of technical nuance and subtlety that comes from just those tiny things is astronomical through the moon high. So the early levels are just really fun, like riding through these huge jumps and doing flips and going crazy. And they're like a little challenging every now and again, but really they're just about fun. And then the later levels are like Celeste level, repeat, die, repeat, die, loaded to check. And they're die, like go, they're go, physics go. problems. I mean, you, you have problems, to understand yeah. like, like even something as simple as like a really steep hill you know, in any other game ever, you just like, you know, flood the throttle and go up the hill really fast. But in this game, it's like you have to propel yourself with enough momentum or you're just going to roll right back down. And, and it's not just momentum. It's like you have to tilt back to lift your front wheel up a little bit so that you don't slam into the hill and then tilt forward at the right time so that you don't fly back off the hill. And then you have to use a little bit of throttle so that you get yourself up because if you use too much, your back wheel flips. And <laughs> if you use too little, then you don't go. And it's like all of these subtle, subtle little things. And one thing I really love about this Trials is that in all the other Trials games before it, it kind of was just like, hey, figure it out. Like, it would explain a concept like that to you in a tutorial level where it would be like, sometimes you have to not hold the throttle on a hill and you, like, try to get past it and then you do and then it never tells you anything about that concept ever again. (sighs) In this one, they've added this whole unbelievably good tutorial series where every skill like that has its own level and has really detailed descriptions of how to do it, the physics behind the move, why it works, why it doesn't, and then has escalating difficulties of those obstacles so that you can just get better and better and better on your own time. And that part of the game is actually really encouraging. But but specifically on Switch, yeah. it's got some control issues. And leaning graphical on, issues? And yeah. I've got some bad news for Switch owners. Oh. Um, unless you want, Unless portability is very important to you, you really shouldn't yeah. get this on Switch. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's not unplayable because it is. Th- so the subtlety thing I was talking about. Sometimes you can't hold down the trigger right. You have to like do a little bit of the way just so it like gets you a little bit of gas, and then you got to ease into it as you can go a little faster. That subtlety is really. It's it's not it doesn't matter as much to maybe the first like two thirds of the levels, but the later stuff, the harder stuff is are literally unbeatable without that. And the Switch doesn't have analog triggers. It only right. has digital, which means it's either full gas or nothing. And yeah. that is genuinely game-breaking for some parts of the level, or some levels in the game. What they've replaced it with is the right stick. So now you have throttle control on the right stick, which means you can kind of tune it up just a little bit. But it's not anywhere near as like comfortable. And maybe I'm saying that just because it's a muscle memory thing, but mm-hmm. it's, it's not quite as good. It's hard to really... like. I don't know what the right way to say it is, but it's it's just, like, not quite there. Uh, the graphics have been tuned down, too. It, they definitely don't look as good, but it also is, like, on handheld mode, it looks mm-hmm. fine. Like, on a TV, you're going to notice, but on a handheld... It kind of happens with a lot of Switch yeah. games, I yeah. feel like. it's When you're playing handheld, it's It's, it's good a trade-off, enough. yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a trade-off, but it's good enough. Um, but unfortunately, unless you're just doing it just to be really casual with it, or you really, really care about handheld mode, the Switch is just not the place to play this game. It just isn't. And... That's a funny thing to say when the game finds its origins in Flash-based browser games where you yeah. literally just had keyboard keys, but it's grown so much from that that it yeah. really doesn't cut it anymore. Um, it's playable. It's fun. You're not going to like hate it on Switch if you have no other options, but it's definitely not the best place for it. It's a bummer. Uh, yeah. Well, on that note, you know what else is a bummer? It's that Reggie... Uh, retired last week. What a That's segue. right. And <laughs> that <laughs> happened right after we, basically right the morning after we recorded the show, so we yep. were not able to talk about it. 
And you know, that classic NVC luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, we are cursed. Thank you for having Pokemon Day early this morning, so we had yeah. time to digest it. I'm sure there's going to be another direct tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, but also some uh, retirement news is that Andrew Goldfarb is retiring from IGN. He's actually going somewhere yeah. else. <laughs> yeah. Retiring young. Yeah, retiring is a much scarier word. I yeah. envy him. Oh, but um, hey, Andrew, yeah. thank you so much for coming. We had to have yeah. you on for Pokemon. We had to have you on for your last podcast. And I know you've talked to Reggie a lot. Yeah. What's your favorite... Reggie, memory. Um, I mean, <laughs> this is a weird favorite memory, but uh, one of the times I interviewed, because I've interviewed Reggie, God, like a, maybe close to a dozen times, I think, over, um, I've been on Jan since 2011, so I, I did it with Rich a couple of times, did it with Jose a couple of times, uh, I've done some solo ones with Miranda, with Jonathan, I've, I've kind of gone all around, um, but uh, Reggie really liked Jose when he worked here, and uh, I remember they had like a really close connection, um, and I once walked in to interview Reggie, who just knew Jose by name, by face, you know, um, New Yorkers, like tall guys, they like immediately bonded. And then <laughs> they walked in, had this really nice hello. And then I walked up behind Jose and I'm like, hi, Reggie. And he's like, hello. And then just like sat down and I was like, oh, man. Uh, but I did have really good times with him. I, I asked him about Mother 3 almost every time I ever talked to him um, <laughs> uh, to the point where he like always saw it coming by the time I would come into the room. Um, That's you again. I just talked to him. Uh, I feel good that I got to talk to him one last time because I talked to him. Right, right after the Game Awards. So I talked to him, what, two months ago. Um, and it was a really good... There's a bunch of stuff from that on the site already. But I got to talk to him about uh, Joker being in Smash. I talked to him about uh, Pokemon Let's Go sales. Like I, I feel good that I had that kind of one last conversation with him. Um, not realizing that that was the final IGN Reggie interview. Which he really said he said that that interview was why. <laughs> Go out on top. <laughs> I yeah. can't do this anymore. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it, it's crazy what a loss that is. I mean, I think of him... Um, I started going to E3. I was in high school. Um, I went to my first E3 was uh, my in between junior and senior year of high school. So 2004. And um, man, it's just crazy to me that like he's been such a part of that company for such a long time and, and has been so synonymous with what I think of when I think press conferences with directs with so many goofy things. It's just going to be bizarre. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it's, uh, it's, it's a real loss for them, I think. Yeah. I'm definitely going to miss Reggie. We're definitely going to miss you and your Pokemon Go knowledge. Me. I seriously don't know what I'm going to do without Andrew telling me all of his Pokemon Go stuff every oh. day. I'll, I'll still just text you. It's fine. I can yeah. still tell you. We have phones. Thank yeah. you for reminding me. I mean, literally, that's what Pokemon Go's on. Oh, oh. man. You're oh, right. you're right. I'll be playing Pokemon Go, so I can't text you. Oh, Sorry. well. <laughs> I'll Twitter DM you. Well, thanks again, Andrew. Good luck yeah. on everything you do in the future. Good luck Thank to Reggie. You. Whatever he's doing, which is retiring. Maybe we're relaxing doing something on a tropical together. island. together. <laughs> Don't don't <laughs> spread rumors, Andrew. I don't know that might. Be what are you, his house cleaner? <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I did bake in some question block questions into the mm. episode when we had our Pokemon professors on. Mm -hmm. So don't have time for another question block. I'm sorry. I'll but answer them before we go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Before we go, I do have to make an announcement. Um, NVC, along with all of our other podcasts, will soon be audio only. Next week will be the last time you see our beautiful faces on the show for the foreseeable future. Um, but hey, don't worry. The show will still be on all of your usual podcast services and YouTube with a static image. So if you watch on YouTube, you can still do that. You just won't be able to see us. But hey, that's fine. And we're not entirely sure how this affects publish times. You know what? Actually, it'll probably still go up on It'll go just go up on Thursday at three now. Rest assured that we will still yeah. miss the biggest news of the week <laughs> <laughs> every week. So thank you so much for watching. Again, next week will be the last video episode, but we really hope that you still stick with us um, in audio only. I know a lot of you only listen to us on audio, so it won't be a change for most mm -hmm. of you, which is great. Um, so, yeah. I also just wanted to say, because we forgot to say it's top of the show, that uh, Zach isn't here today because he was getting wisdom teeth surgery. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> we forgot to say that. Yep, but, Zach is getting his wisdom yeah. teeth removed. We hope that he is okay. And <laughs> Pear is just not here because he's mad at me for quitting. No, he's just incredibly busy and begged no, for me to replace him. <laughs> They're all working on that secret project with Andrew and Reggie for once they leave. <laughs> man, who will know? But anyway, thank you so much for watching again. This is NBC, IGN's Nintendo voice chat Nintendo podcast. Man, lots of Nintendos in there. <laughs> <laughs> but you can catch us every Thursday at 3 p.m. on IGN Podcast Services YouTube um, with or without the video. So thank you so much for tuning in. And remember, this is the only place that you can get the thing. No one else said it? Just me? Get Just the thing. Me. There we go. <laughs> Somebody wrote dog from Undertale on these notes, and there's no context, and I really love it. <laughs> <laughs>